Hello everyone, it's Jarrett Moore with the Enterprise DNA team back again today to do a video on something that we like to call the period table. What the period table does is it creates a distinct date range so you can slice your data the way that you want. As you can see on the screen here, I have all dates, yesterday, today, five days, 15 days, one month, three months, six months, year to date, and one year and two years of data. What I'm gonna do now is show you how I come up with the idea for this. So with that being said, let's hop on over to the Enterprise DNA Forum and I'll show you where we got this post. This right here is a post that I posted back in the Enterprise DNA Forum back in May of this year. Link to this will be in the description below. I originally got this idea from a blog that Chris Webb did a couple years back. And if you want to, in this link, when you get into the Enterprise DNA Forum, you can click on this link and take you to his blog and get the whole read up on how he accomplished what he did. But also you can do that in my thread here. If you scroll down, you can see how I come up with it. And you can even see the M code that I created to implement this strategy. So... Why I come up with the video today is another thread that just recently popped up in the Enterprise DNA Forum. Let me head on over to that. And link to this will also be in the description below. This forum post right here, it all started with a, uh, a Yahoo Finance idea trying to get API connected um, to Power BI. But as we scroll down the thread here, myself, um, and Brian Julius, who's also an enterprise DNA expert on the enterprise DNA team, um, were tasked with um, creating these time periods to slice his data. And then Brian helped with connecting the data to the API so he could bring in all the information from Yahoo Finance. So as you scroll down this post here, you can see all of the different things that we discussed throughout here. This is a great way to learn and bring your Power BI development to the next level. So without further ado, let's head back on over to the Power BI desktop. Once we're back in the Power BI desktop, here's that slicer again. Um, here is the period table, what it looks like. Simple, pretty pretty basic. There's three different um, fields that are that included in this period. But let me show you how I did this. And first we'll have to go back over here to the Home tab. And then we'll go to transform data because all of this was actually just created in the query editor with M code. As you can see, here's the, how the data model is set up. Um, as you scroll down the screen here, if one of the first things that I did was create a, um, a query for the minimum dates. And if we look at that, I can go over here to the advanced editor and basically I found the minimum date that was in the dates table in this example. And then I went in and created a max dates and see how we did that is basically just did this type of M code right here to get the max date that's in the date table. Now, I know there are other ways of doing this. This is how I just set it up for this example. Now let's open up that period table here. And as you can see, if I open up the period here and hit load more, this will give us all of the ex examples um, of those dates, uh, ranges that were available on the previous page that I showed you. So if I open up the advanced editor here and show you how this happened, here you can have a look at all of the M code that was basically just copied and pasted uh, from the forum post that I mentioned, the very first forum post that I mentioned earlier in the video. Basically, I wanted to get um, the today's date first, call that today's date, and you will actually see that reference throughout here um, to get all dates. That's where I use the min dates and max dates that we created over here before I opened up and, and created the period table. Um, this is how I come up with yesterday's date. Obviously, today's date. And then here are all the examples 
Um, and once you get, once I got the example for five days, it was very easy to do the 15 day. Um, and then instead of add days, I changed the M code to date dot add months to get the difference in months. And then year to date is basically just from the start of the start of, of the year, uh, which is in today's date to today. And then here I have the years of one full year of, of data from today. And then this one is from two years from today. I just want to reemphasize that if you go to that forum post in the Enterprise DNA forum, that I'll have this M code copied and pasted in there for you as well. So you can have this example in there as well. So now let's go ahead and close the Power Query Editor. Head back to the model here. And right here on the screen right now, we have this set up to six months worth of data. Uh, let's go with year to date just to show you how it, it definitely slices the data here. Here's a full year of data. Here's a full two years of data. Um, this is um, how, how it works in, an, in a nice, easy way. Um, that's basically all I wanted to show you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tip. And if you did, please make sure you hit that like button below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below. That way you don't miss out on any upcoming content being out here on the YouTube channel. Thanks, and that's all for now.